But why do people with scleroderma have autoantibodies? Well, that's a very good question. And we're hoping that uh, you as patient organizations supporting research in these fields can really help us work out why. And we learned a little bit earlier as to groups elsewhere in the world who are really doing some cutting edge research to really understand why these antibodies might get formed in scleroderma. But from our perspective, they're very helpful for three reasons. They're found in virtually all people with systemic sclerosis. Thankfully, most patients only carry one type of antibody. And they also, to some extent, help us to predict the future. And that's very important because we know that patients with systemic sclerosis, particularly early on in their disease course, when they're told they have scleroderma, the first thing they'll do is go home and Google scleroderma. And that opens a Pandora's box of terror. And we are conscious, we're aware of this as clinicians, and we try and counsel patients accordingly. I often quote this particular paper, which came out of the Canadian Scleroderma Research Group, which referred to the 15% rule. And that says that 15% of patients, or only 15% of patients, develop the more serious manifestations of systemic sclerosis. So that's roughly one in six uh, patients. And what this study showed, looking at nearly 1,000 patients, was that about one in six patients develop pulmonary arterial hypertension, which is where you develop Raynaud's-like problems within the lungs that puts pressure on the heart. One in six patients develop a scleroderma renal crisis. One in six patients develop severe progressive scar tissue formation on the lungs. One in six patients will develop recurrent problems with ulcers in their fingers. Same for heart involvement and same for significant inflammation in the muscles and joints. So anyone with systemic sclerosis will assume that because they've been unlucky enough to develop systemic sclerosis that they're bound to develop all of these problems. But in actual fact, five out of six patients won't develop those problems. Unfortunately, and what keeps us busy is most patients might develop one of those list of problems. But it's very unusual to see more a patient experiencing to any significant degree more than one or two of those problems. <laughs> 